Hey, welcome to Generative Art with Flutter. This is a series of videos where I create a small animation effect using Flutter Canvas and showing you how to code it up. In this episode, I'm going to create this mesmerizing raw shark looking animation. Hello, Mr. Psychopod. Tell me what you see in this image. It looks like butterflies and <laughs> I could just keep looking at it like a meth addict. Anyway, enough slacking, let's get busy. Here we are in our usual code setup. Some of you were confused how the animation works in this setup. So let me walk you through the code and reintroduce you to what we have. Uh, on the init state, we are creating an animation controller and an animation, then attach a listener. The rest of this is to keep the animation running. You can think of this as a glorified timer. When it elapses, it calls the listeners. In the listener, we have two functions we should pay attention to. One is to create a bunch of particles and the other to update those particles. Note how the update is cleverly called inside the set state lambda. This means after our update, the Flutter framework will redraw this widget. Now in the build function, we use a scaffolding to host our custom painter. Sole job of my painter canvas is to draw the particles passed in. Here I have a random dump generator, the particles list and a size passed into my custom painter. Random number generator object is not necessary. This is a remnant from something we did earlier. It should be okay for us to remove that. While we are at it, let's clean up this gunk. We can directly use the create blob field function for our work, then it's cleaner. Now let's get the big guns out. First we create an object of pearly noise. This is what drives the whole animation. We used pearly noise earlier in the fabric animation video. If you missed that, perhaps you could have a look. Links are in the description. To create the pearly noise object, we use a library called fast noise. You can get it from pubdev. It has various types of noise algorithms. The idea behind this animation is that we would create particles around a point. So we would first create the particles of the first half. Each particle's position is decided by the angle and the distance from the center. We set the distance to smooth random value returned by Perlin noise function. The Perlin2 function expects two arguments. Uh, we will use the angle value as one parameter and set the other to a constant as seen here. We will make use of that second parameter later on. So now we have an angle and a radius, which means we can use polar to Cartesian conversion uh, to find the position of the particle. Since we are using degrees, we need to convert this to radians. So now we just create a particle and fill out its properties. Okay, that should do it. Of course, you won't, uh, you won't see anything because dumbass me forgot to add the particle to the list. <laughs> There, now amazing. Tiny circle in the middle, thanks a lot. But hang in there, all is not lost. You don't see the other particles because the Z is too small. Um, it varies from zero to one. So let's scale that up with big R. We don't want Z to be zero. So we add the minimum value uh, to be R. That should do it. Nice, looks like a ball Let's see if we can move this around now. This is done in set particle. As you've seen earlier, set particle is called for each of the particle in the update core. So what we are going to do is to change the distance z of the particle. In order to do that, we again compute z with Perlin noise, but with a small change. Otherwise, Perlin noise will give the same value for the same input. Unlike random number functions, which gives the uh, gives a different number each time you call it. So we need to store the L we used earlier in the particles alpha property. And for the second parameter of Perlin noise, we add a tiny change that is set by beta. 
we will also increase this beta value every time particle updates. Now the rest is as before. We compute the particle's position using the this new z value we, uh, we computed. Okay, so it moves. Excellent progress, if I say so myself. Now that we animated one half of the circle, um, let's do the same for this other half. Since it's mirroring, we will generate the same Perlin noise values, but the angle has to continue from 180 to 360. This is pretty much the same code as above, apart from the angle denoted by LL Cool J. I mean, LL. That probably was too much of a reveal of how old I am. Moving on. Now, we need to store this value in the particle, and I've decided to use another Greek letter called Gamma. Uh, but you could use any variable name. I don't know. Bob, Jane, Simon. Okay, now we have the animation mirrored. Let's do a small refactor to clean this mess up. That function is called add particle because that's what it does. Okay, much better. Now we're gonna create more rings like this. The rings will be placed one inside the other and it should only affect the distance offset. So we vary this from let's say 50 to 200 with some step value. Um, it's a good time to create a function out of these two loops. Let's call it create ring. Let's pass the value uh, f all the way into the function add particle and set the position with it. And also save it in the particles property called theta because we need that to update the particle. And here we go. Multiple rings changing and moving, and they are very similar, but not quite exact. Subtle changes come from the properties of Berlin noise. Now, let's slow it down a bit to make it more civilized. Next is to set the blend mode so it looks good. Setting the blend mode takes the quality of the animation from broadcast fiber quality to an actual professional quality. Now, as a cherry on top, I will increase the number of rings and notice the improvement to the render quality and the smoothness of the animation. I don't know why it speeds up the rendering when there are more computations. That's some X files thing that I cannot really explain. But there you have it. Hope you enjoyed it and gained something from watching the video. If you'd like to see more of these, please like and share the video and subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions, leave a comment and I will try to answer all your questions. See you in the next one.